Section 37 of Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Leonard Wilson. Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 3, Section 37, Selected Excerpts, by Philip James Bailey. Philip James Bailey, 1816. In Bailey we have a striking instance of the man whose reputation is made suddenly by a single work which obtains an amazing popularity, and which is presently almost forgotten except as a name. When in 1839 the long poem Festus appeared, its author was an unknown youth who had hardly reached his majority. Within a few months he was a celebrity. That so dignified and suggestive a performance should have come from so young a poet was considered a marvel of precocity by the literary world, both English and American. The author of Festus was born at Bassford, Nottinghamshire, England, April twenty second, eighteen sixteen, educated at the public schools of Nottingham and at Glasgow University, he studied law, and at nineteen entered Lincoln's Inn. In eighteen forty he was admitted to the bar. But his vocation in life appears to have been metaphysical and spiritual, rather than legal. His Festus, a poem, containing fifty-five episodes or successive scenes, some thirty-five thousand lines, was begun in his twentieth year. Three years later it was in the hands of the English reading public. Like Goethe's Faust, in pursuing the course of a human soul through influences emanating from the supreme good and the supreme evil, in having heaven and the world as its scene, in its inclusion of God and the devil, the archangels and angels, the powers of perdition, and withal many earthly types in its action, it is by no means a mere imitation of the great German. Its plan is wider. It incorporates even more impressive spiritual material than Faust offers. Not only is its mortal hero, Festus, conducted through an amazing pilgrimage, spiritual and redeemed by divine love, but we have in the poem a conception of close association with Christianity, profound ethical suggestions, a flood of theology and philosophy, metaphysics and science, picturing good and evil, love and hate, peace and war, the past, the present, and the future, earth, heaven, and hell, heights and depths, dominions, principalities, and powers, God and man, the whole of being, and of not being, all in an effort to unmask the last and greatest secrets of infinity. And more than all this, Festus strives to portray the sufficiency of divine love and of the divine atonement, to dissipate, even to annihilate, evil. For even Lucifer and the hosts of darkness are restored to purity and to peace among the sons of God, the children of light. The love of God is set forth as limitless. We have before us the birth of matter at the Almighty's fiat, and we close the work with the salvation and ecstasy, described as decreed from the beginning, of whatever creature had been given a spiritual existence, and made a spiritual subject and agency. There is in the doctrine of Festus no such thing as the son of perdition, who shall be an ultimate castaway. Few English poems have attracted more general notice from all intelligent classes of readers than did Festus on its advent. Orthodoxy was not a little aghast at its theologic suggestions. Criticism of it as a literary production was hampered not a little by religious sensitiveness. The London Literary Gazette said of it, 
it is an extraordinary production out heroding kant in some of its philosophy and out gertying gerty in the introduction of the three persons of the trinity as interlocutors in its wild plot most objectionable as it is on this account it yet contains so many exquisite passages of genuine poetry that our admiration of the author's genius overpowers the feeling of mortification at its being misapplied and meddling with such dangerous topics by his part or place how slight a chance may raise or sink a soul lucifer what men call accident is god's own part he lets ye work your will it is his own but that ye mean not know not do not he doth festus what is life worth without a heart to feel the great and lovely harmonies which time and nature change responsive all writ out by preconcertive hand which swells the strain to divine fullness feel the poetry the soothing rhythm of life's foreordered lay the sacredness of things for all things are sacred so far the worst of them as seen by the eye of god they in the aspect bide of holiness nor shall outlaw sin be slain though rebel band within the sceptre's length but privileged even for service oh to stand soul raptured on some lofty mountain thought and feel the spirit expand into a view millennial life exalting of a day when earth shall have all leisure for high ends of social culture ends a liberal law and common peace of nations blent with charge divine shall win for man were joy indeed 
nor greatly less to know what might be now worked will for good with power for one brief hour but look at these these individual souls how sadly men show out of joint with man there are millions never think a noble thought but with brute hate of brightness bay a mind which drives the darkness out of them like hounds throw but a false glare round them and in shoals they rush upon perdition that's the race what charm is in this world seen to such minds blinded by dust what can they do in heaven a state of spiritual means and ends thus must i doubt perpetually doubt lucifer who never doubted never half believed where doubt there truth is tis her shadow i declare unto thee that the past is not i have looked over all life yet never seen the age that had been why then fear or dream about the future nothing but what is is else god were not the maker that he seems as constant in creating as in being embrace the present let the future pass plague not thyself about a future that only which comes direct from god his spirit is deathless nature gravitates without effort and so all mortal natures fall deathwards all aspiration is a toil but inspiration cometh from above and is no labour the earth's inborn strength could never lift her up to yon stars whence she fell nor human soul by native worth claim heaven as birthright more than man may call cloudland his home the soul's inheritance its birthplace and its death-place is of earth until god maketh earth and soul anew the one like heaven the other like himself so shall the new creation come at once sin the dead branch upon the tree of life shall be cut off for ever and all souls concluded in god's boundless amnesty festus thou windest and unwindest faith at will what am i to believe lucifer thou mayest believe but that thou art forced to festus then i feel perforce that instinct of immortal life in me which prompts me to provide for it lucifer perhaps festus man hath a knowledge of a time to come his most important knowledge the weight lies nearest the short end and the world depends upon what is to be i would deny the present if the future oh there is a life to come or all's a dream lucifer and all may be a dream thou seest in thine men deeds clear moving full of speech and order then why may not all this world be but a dream of god's fear not some morning god may waken festus i would it were this life's a mystery the value of a thought cannot be told but it is clearly worth a thousand lives like many men's and yet men love to live as if mere life were worth their living for what but perdition will it be to most life's more than breath and the quick round of blood it is a great spirit and a busy heart the coward and the small in soul scarce do live one generous feeling one great thought one deed of good ere night would make life longer seem than if each year might number a thousand days spent as is this by nations of mankind we live in deeds not years in thoughts 
not breaths in feelings not in figures on a dial we should count time by heart throbs he most lives who thinks most feels the noblest acts the best life's but a means unto an end that end beginning mean and end to all things god the dead have all the glory of the world why will we live and not be glorious we never can be deathless till we die it is the dead win battles and the breath of those who through the world drive like a wedge tearing earth's empires up nears death so close it dims his well-worn scythe but no the brave die never being deathless they but change their country's arms for more their country's heart give then the dead their due it is they who saved us the rapid and the deep the fall the gulf have likenesses in feeling and in life and life so varied hath more loveliness in one day than a creeping century of sameness but youth loves and lives on change till the soul sighs for sameness which at last becomes variety and takes its place yet some will last to die out thought by thought and power by power and limb of mind by limb like lamps upon a gay device of glass till all of soul that's left be dry and dark till even the burden of some ninety years hath crashed into them like a rock shattered their system as if ninety suns had rushed to ruin earth or heaven had rained its stars till they become like scrolls unreadable through dust and mould can they be cleaned and read do human spirits wax and wane like moons lucifer the eye dims and the heart gets old and slow the lithe limbs stiffen and the sun-hued locks thin themselves off or whitely wither still ages not spirit even in one point immeasurably small from orb to orb rising in radiance ever like the sun shining upon the thousand lands of earth the passing bell clara true prophet mayest thou be but list that sound the passing bell the spirit should solemnize for while on its emancipate path the soul still waves its upward wings and we still hear the warning sound it is known we well may pray festus but pray for whom clara it means not pray for all pray for the good man's soul he is leaving earth for heaven and it soothes us to feel that the best may be forgiven festus pray for the sinful soul it fleeth we know not where but wherever it be let us hope for god is there clara pray for the rich man's soul not all be unjust nor vain the wise he consoled and he saved the poor from pain festus pray for the poor man's soul the death of this life of ours he hath shook from his feet he is one of the heavenly powers pray for the old man's soul he hath labored long through life it was battle or march he hath ceased serene from strife clara pray for the infant's soul with its spirit crown unsoiled he hath won without war a realm gained all nor toiled festus pray for the struggling soul the mists of the straits of death clear off in some bright star isle it anchoreth pray for the soul assured though it wrought 
in a gloomy mine, yet the gems it earned were its own, that soul's divine. Clara. Pray for the simple soul, for it loved, and therein was wise, though itself knew not, but with heaven confused the skies. Festus. Pray for the sage's soul, neath his welkin wide of mind, lay the central thought of God, thought undefined, pray for the souls of all to our God, that all may be with forgiveness crowned, and joy eternally. Clara. Hush, for the bell hath ceased, and the spirit's fate is sealed, to the angels known, to man best unrevealed thoughts festus well farewell mr student may you never regret those hours which make the mind if they unmake the body for the sooner we are fit to be all mind the better blessed is he whose heart is the home of the great dead and their great thoughts who can mistake great thoughts they seize upon the mind, arrest and search and shake it, bow the tall soul as by wind, rush over it like a river over weeds which quaver in the current, turn us cold and pale and voiceless, leaving in the brain a rocking and a ringing, glorious but momentary, madness might it last, and close the soul with heaven as with a seal. In lieu of all these things, whose loss thou mournest, if earnestly or not I know not, use the great and good and true, which ever live, and are all common to pure eyes and true. Upon the summit of each mountain thought, worship thou God, with heaven uplifted head, and arms horizon stretched, for deity is seen from every elevation of the soul. Study the light, attempt the high, seek out the soul's bright path, and since the soul is fire, of heat intelligential, turn it a to the all-fatherly source of light and life. Piety purifies the soul to see visions perpetually of grace and power which to their sight, who in ignorant sin abide, are now as air incognizable. Obey thy genius, for a minister it is unto the throne of fate. Draw towards thy soul, and centralize the rays which are around of the divinity. Keep thy spirit pure from worldly taint, by the repellent strength of virtue. Think on noble thoughts and deeds ever. Count o'er the rosary of truth, and practice precepts which are proven wise. It matters not, then, what thou fearest. Walk boldly and wisely in that light thou hast. There is a hand above will help thee on. I am an omnist, and believe in all religions fragments of one golden world to be relit yet and take its place in heaven where is the whole soul truth in deity meanwhile his word his law writ soul wise here study its truths love practice its behests they will be with thee when all else have gone mind body passion all wear out not faith nor truth keep thy heart cool or rule its heat to fixed ends waste it not upon itself not all the agony may be of the damned fused in one pang vies with that earthquake throb which wakens soul from life waste to let see the world rolled by for a and we must wait for our next chance the nigh eternity whether it be in heaven or elsewhere dreams 
Festus. The dead of night, earth seems but seeming, the soul seems but a something dreaming. The bird is dreaming in its nest of song and sky and loved one's breast. The lapdog dreams as round he lies in moonshine of his mistress's eyes. The steed is dreaming in his stall of one long breathless leap and fall. The hawk hath dreamed him thrice of wings wide as the skies he may not cleave, but waking feels them clipped and clings mad to the perch twere mad to leave. The child is dreaming of its toys, the murderer of calm home joys. The weak are dreaming endless fears, the proud of how their pride appears. The poor enthusiast who dies of his life dreams the sacrifice, sees as enthusiast only can the truth that made him more than man and hears once more in visioned trance the voice commanding to advance where wealth is gained love wisdom won or deeds of danger dared and done the mother dreameth of her child the maid of him who hath beguiled the youth of her he loves too well the good of god the ill of hell who live of death of life who die the dead of immortality the earth is dreaming back her youth hell never dreams for woe is truth and heaven is dreaming o'er her prime long ere the morning stars of time and dream of heaven alone can i my lovely one when thou art nigh chorus of the saved from the conclusion father of goodness son of love spirit of comfort be with us god who hast made us god who hast saved god who hast judged us thee we praise heaven our spirits hallow our hearts let us have god light endlessly ours is the wide world heaven on heaven what have we done lord worthy this oh we have loved thee that alone maketh our glory duty meed oh we have loved thee love we will ever and every soul of us god of the saved god of the tried god of the lost ones be with all let us be near thee ever and a oh let us love thee infinite end of section thirty seven recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio